Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm out on Edmondson Avenue in West Baltimore and if you're looking at the shopping center behind me and saying hey that looks kind of like Colonial Williamsburg bingo that is exactly what it's supposed to look like it was built in 1947 and we're going to talk a little bit about that i am thrilled that today i'm joined by lachelle bynum some of you may remember lachelle as the ghost sign expert who joined me on a video some months ago well it happens that she also knows a thing or two about edmondson village shopping center uh, and just so happened to have grown up around the corner in edmondson village neighborhood but before I turn it over to Lachelle, let me say a word or two about the shopping center here. Again, built in 1947, and as a historic preservationist, I have to say it kind of got off to the wrong, uh, off on the wrong foot. It started by demolishing the historic Hunting Ridge Mansion, which dated to the 1700s. Um, Hunting Ridge, the neighborhood uh, next door here, uh, that's where it got its name. But in the 1940s, the mansion had been vacant for some time, and two developers, Joseph and Jim, Jacob Meyerhoff uh, thought that they had an idea for a new kind of shopping experience, one that was oriented towards people arriving by car. And the, the old mansion had to go to clear, way, clear the way for this shopping center here. The idea was that by the 1940s, more Americans were able to afford cars, and the Meyerhoffs were jumping on this new wave of an idea that people would drive to go shopping. And so they wanted to, uh, they created this uh, shopping mall out here but they wanted to also give it some a look of permanence and heritage and what better architecture than uh, than sort of borrowing from colonial williamsburg um, the shops that they chose were also pretty impressive the anchor was hoshel cone and there were 19 separate retailers here and many of you may remember some of the shops many of you may also remember the monkeys uh, everybody remembers the monkeys Hess shoes here had a big window and in the window were pet monkeys that would play around what can i say it was a different era back then um, things got off to a great start uh, at the shopping center in 1956 when the pratt library branch moved in that was even better and when hex uh, joined hochel cone by building a big department store across the street this became a shopping uh, haven uh, but it didn't last too long uh, before it started to have competition just 10 years later the meyerhoffs developed another shopping center a little bit west of here in catonsville a uh, west side shopping center Westview Shopping Center. Um, and then uh, along the new Beltway, uh, shopping malls uh, started to sprout up, like Security Square Mall, drawing shoppers away from here. Um, by 1973, Hoshel Cone had closed, and by the late 70s, Hex had closed, and the vacancy rate here at, uh, at the mall was uh, upwards of 50%. Um, intertwined with that, as uh, Professor Ed Orser from University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC, has uh, so thoroughly documented and written about, um, the neighborhood was experiencing another transition, and that was demographically. In the 1950s and 60s, it was changing from predominantly white to predominantly black and like so many other places in Baltimore and across the country uh, that demographic shift was accompanied with some economic upheaval including here at the mall all right one more thing uh, that I want to say uh, before turning it over to Michelle is uh, recently uh, just a few years ago there was a horrible fire here I believe in a restaurant and took out a number of buildings and the roof uh, even more recently there was a, at least one other maybe two other fires um, uh, the shopping center is looking okay, but it needs, uh, it needs a little bit of love. Um, I do not know where things stand with its redevelopment. Um, maybe, maybe if you do, you can let us know. Maybe if you're affiliated with the company that owns it, you can let us know. Uh, but we're going to try to find out. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Lachelle uh, to say a few more words. Lachelle, we're all yours. Good morning. My name is Lachelle Bynum. I am proud to say I grew up in Emerson Village and I still live in Emerson Village. Now, when I grew up here, we had Pantry Pride Market, we had Hoshel Cone. Hoshel Cone had the biggest and the most beautiful windows with their glass dishes and vases and clothes. I remember a lady parked in front of the big glass windows and she put her car in drive and she should have put it in reverse and she went straight through the glass. Uh, we also had a K Cats and Sons. I don't remember exactly what they sold. And we had a Clayton shoe store. We had a village restaurant where you can go in and sit down and dine. 
We had a Fisher's Hardware store. And my favorite was Crib and Cradle Toy Store. Yes. We also had a Tommy Tucker's, which had a lunch counter where you could eat and just shop. And then further down from that was a Rundle's Ice Cream. All of those stores were in the top of the village area. Also now where you see the giant food market in the auto zone, that whole entire area used to be A.D. Anderson car dealership where my mother bought her first car, which was a green Chevy Nova. When you come back down to the second part of the shopping center on the corner, that was the movie theater. But on the side of the movie theater was the bowling alley. The movie theater was where I saw my first spooky movie, Die Monster Die, scared me to death. Uh, across the street, which is now West Side Skill Center, was the head company. But right there where the words West Side Skill Center are, there was a place called the Hot Shop Cafeteria. Loved the food. My mother and I and my sister, when she came along, we used to go in there and eat. I could taste that food standing here talking about it. Everything was in this area for the families who, who, who lived here. If we didn't go downtown and didn't go to Westview, we didn't have to because everything was right here. We could get our clothes from the head company, Hosha Cone. It was such a beautiful place especially at night when the stores were lit up and the signs were lit up. It was gorgeous and I miss it. I miss what it used to be and I hope when they rebuild it that they will replace the buildings that burnt down, put it back in that colonial space and, you know, make it what it used to be.